So we're in a client's home in Gettysburg, Maryland, and what we have a problem with is this sofa to get it up the stairs. So you get to see how big this sofa is, and when you wonder how people get furniture, especially in tight cities like New York and Chicago and things like that, uh, into small apartments or narrow staircases, I'm going to show you uh, the process, and now you know uh, what to do if you find that you cannot get a piece of furniture, a sofa, into a room in a small apartment. So let's get started. First thing I want you to do is flip the sofa over and get to the dust cover. This here is called a dust cover. This particular one, you need to take the legs off. I'm going to take these off here, and we're going to take off the staples here. I can tell that the upholsterer originally took this side off, and the reason I know is because on the side here, he hand sewed the outside arm fabric down rather than using ply grip. Uh, that on that side has ply grip, and this side here is hand sewn, so I know that he took this side off. And I think it's probably best to work with the side that he took off and see how he did it. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take off the legs, take off the dust cover. You don't have to take the whole thing off, the dust cover that is. Just take enough to expose the arm. We're trying to remove this arm, and uh, that's what I'm going to do now. Now we got the dust cover off. I tucked it underneath the zigzag spring here. Now the next step is we're going to take the outside arm fabric off. And to completely get the outside arm fabric off, we're going to have to remove the portion of the outside back as well. I need to get this fabric off. And what I was saying to you earlier, as far as I know which side he, uh, that is the last upholsterer, worked on this, this is hand sewn here. And uh, I'll show you the difference between uh, this and what's on the back from the factory. So um, the other side of the sofa has what's on the back here at the factory. It's not hand sewn on that side. That's how I know that he worked on this side. When he came down here, he closed the outside arm fabric up by hand sewing. So the next step, we're going to take off all this, and then we'll get right back to you. A quick tip for you to think about. When you're taking out staples and they're breaking, take your, uh, your uh, tool here and press down any of these pieces of uh, staple still sticking up because you will get cut by it. Just take a little hammer and, and hammer it down. Let's see this here. So you end up cutting yourself on that. So now we got the outside arm um, off here. I got to work the outside back and I'll show you how that's done here. Make sure all your staples are off or out. See this fabric is starting to fray. This client here is going to reupholster this sofa, so we would want to be careful with the fabric that's here because some people obviously are going to want to keep the fabric that they have on the sofa. They just want to get it out of here, um, but we, we have the, the privilege of reupholstering it, so we have to be so careful with the fabric that's on here. But nonetheless, I'll still try to take it off that way So in case you need to keep yours. So this is how you take the outside back off. I'm getting this tack remover here. And this is, like I said, what's on the other side at the factory of the outside arm. And as I said once again, he hand sewed this over here, and I know that's why he worked on that. They wouldn't have hand sewn on this side and then. Um, the tack strip on this side. So let me take this off. I'm only going to take it off to about right here and um, then, then we'll get back to you. This is what holds on the outside back of at least 90% of the furniture out there. It's this metal strip here and it has uh, like uh, uh, prongs or mimicking tacks sticking out like that. Take this off and put it aside it's almost impossible to reuse these. You can do it, but you're going to have to get ply grip or a replacement tack strip here to put this back on. 
or you can, um, if you have cording here and you're really good at it, you can hand sew it closed just like he did on the outside arm here. But th this, is, um, this is very sharp, so just carefully bend it over and get it out of your way. So this here is the uh, outside arm um, staples here, fabric that is, outside arm staples, holding on the um, outside fabric. And I'm going to take all these off, and then we're going to start taking the batting staples out to see how we need to start getting to the wood of the arm here. So what we're trying to do is just get the fabric out of the way first. I'm trying to keep it where, is if you want to keep this fabric, you would do it this way. But um, normally I would just slice this off because we're going to reupholster it anyhow. So, But I'm doing it so if you need to do this to get it down into a uh, tight space, this is how you would do it. seat front fabric wrapping around is holding back the batting here. This is what some people call a uh, sock arm or a, a slip arm. It's sewn on this side and sewn on that side to the inside arm and it's just pulled down. So obviously I don't want to keep taking it uh, past this point here. Probably don't need to anyhow. I'm just going to take these out, pull this back, and then see how this arm is attached and then take it from there. All right, so you, this is what I was talking about, a slip arm or a sock arm. It's sewn on this side, sewn on that side, and it's just simply pulled down like this. I can see the upholster here, hand sewn, sewn this here too. So normally there would be some kind of like a ply grip or something there. So this is what we need to start pulling back, pulling this back. This is here is called pull strips. This is, um, you know, the, the excess here so you can pull. Sometimes they're sewn to the fabric. And then they're legitimately pull strips, or this is um, part of the, uh, the decking material. And that's what I need to take off here. I need to start seeing where this thing was taken apart by the other upholster so I can get this arm out of here. That's the next move. This top fabric here is the uh, pull strip for the inside arm, and then this fabric here is for um, the platform. So as you can see, it matches the same fabric there. We have to take all these staples out. I'm trying to see where he attached, uh, the last upholster attached the, the arm to the frame. It looks like he just used staples. Um, again, at least that's what I'm getting so far. So that's what I'm doing. I'm taking this out here and then finding out how this, this arm can, can be removed. I might have to go through the outside back. I, I'm just examining it now to see how it was done. All these staples here need to be removed. This is a brace that the top of the uh, arm sits on. This piece of wood here goes all the way to the front over there. So um, this needs to be removed here. There are some staples on this side I need to get out. I might have to take a reciprocating saw or a sawzall, whatever, and cut this in half right there. Um, not, not in half, but uh, cut the uh, staples uh, free. So remove these. I'm going to remove these. I'm going to probably cut these free with a, uh, a saw. And then over here, I had a piece of webbing that was across, which is attached to the front of the arm here, over there. I took that off there, and I took the staples that are here um, away, because this is all one unit. That's all this is, is one unit. And this is for this particular chair. I don't know what your situation is going to be. Um, it can get, uh, it could be a little easier, it could be a little more complicated. But what you need to do is find out how is this arm attached to the inside back and to the bottom rail. This is a unit of its own, and that's what I'm trying to find out how they did it uh, to, to free this up. And the important thing is get one of the arms off with as little damage as possible to the frame and to the fabric. So what I'm going to do next, take these staples out, um, try to get these staples out here. I might try to dig them out a little bit, but I don't want to do a whole lot of damage. If I can get my reciprocating saw back there, with a hacksaw blade, then that's, that's probably what I'm going to do. So this is the front of the sofa. I just uh, put it on its back. You see this block here, which is attached to the, the front rail, the side rail. I've got this block here. This here is the front of the arm there. So this here is what's uh, another pull strip, and that's part of the fabric that's pulled down here. So I am going to uh, just get this out of my way real quick. And I got staples coming in from 
up here. Your staple's coming in over here. So I have to knock that free. This looks like it might be glued here. And um, that's the next step. I took some staples in the back out, and some of the uh, spots weren't necessary, but that's okay. I'll just replace them with uh, new staples. And um, I didn't force it, so it's still got glue there, and I'll put new staples back in a different spot. And um, um, that's it. Uh, I'm going to work on this right now, and then we'll hopefully be... I told you there was uh, staples underneath this plate here, but I looked around the side here, and I can tell this is where the uh, other upholsterer used his staples. It doesn't look factory right here, so i got to remove these. These here are attached to this too. So what I'm trying to tell you is just take your time, look around every spot as to where this thing is being held on, and um, remove all the staples that you can. If not, so far I haven't done any cutting with the Sawzall. I was trying to avoid that if I could, and so far I'm there. But that's what I got to do too. I saw these over here, so I wanted to show you that. Okay, so I hit the side of this uh, rail here with my rubber mallet just to expose the staples that are still stuck in there. I'm not coming all the way up, at least I don't think I'm going to, to free them. I'm just going to cut these right here. And then I'm going to have to nail this down to get these staples out. Hammer this downward is what I'm saying. There's staples here. Or I might have to cut them. But right now I'm just going to cut this small section right here. I'm not going all the way up unless I have to. Okay, I was hoping to avoid cutting all these staples here, but I, I have to. So I hammered on the face with the rubber mallet to uh, loosen this up. Thankfully, <laughs> there's not a lot of glue on this one. So I'm going to um, cut all these uh, staples free here. It's going to be a lot easier. When I get back to the shop, I'll put glue in there and then I'll pre-drill and then um, put in screws instead of just um, uh, staples. So that's what i got to do now. I'm going to cut these uh, staples free that are attached to the front rail. We're still attached in the back here. The front we did cut free. Worked out very nicely. And now I'm just trying to, yeah, so we got staples back here. I don't know if the light is bright enough for you to see, but they're, they're right here. And I'm going to take my mallet, knock that up, take my saws off, cut them free, and um, that's it. Okay, so when I cut the staples um, off of here, I realized that the foundation fabric of the inside arm was holding on the uh, fabric. I mean, holding on to the wood, rather. So I had to take that off. This is the inside uh, webbing strip for the inside arm, that is. And it gives a little stability right in the middle. And I'm going to loosen this up as well. Now, obviously, when we get back to the shop, i got to put all this back together. But we're just trying to get it up the stairs and get it out of here. And so far... It's going okay. Um, if you have to do this, it can be intimidating, but just take your time and look everywhere where it's attached, um, and definitely take photos. Uh, no doubt, I'm sure you have a digital camera. Use it because it works. Let's uh, see if we can pull this out. And the arm is removed. Okay, this uh, soap has an actual special application. What I showed you before for the arm is perfect if that's all you need to take out. Just to get around the, the doorway, give you a little extra room. That, that sometimes can help. But this sofa is 8 feet long, which is very unusual. So uh, we have to actually go where the upholsterer took it another step further to get it down here in the basement and actually take the uh, sofa apart. We're going to take approximately like three feet out. What he did, you can see this tie here, 
Um, this is him tying the zigzag springs together. This is a support for the zigzag springs, and he cut this earlier. This, these are his cuts here. I can see right here he cut the frame in half right here. This brace is factory. This brace here is factory as well. So it's cut here. He put a plate underneath this Dacron or batting. And I'm going to expose all this. I've got to go through the outside back, which I'll show you that in a moment, and um, start taking all this apart. Uh, I take the screws out. If he used, I think he did use glue. I'm going to have to take the saws all and glue that out. And don't forget, if you have the zigzag springs, you're going to have to cut this wire as well. If you have hourglass springs or um, coiled springs, it's going to be a much bigger job. I really wouldn't take this on yourself if you have hourglass or coil springs. These zigzag or, or sagless springs, you can do that. Just make sure when you cut them, you, you um, put a tie back on here. You need that support. You need this. Okay, so I'm going to get started. You're going to see the rest of it. So you have to remove the edge roll here. It had staples put into the rail here. And you've got to move what, the, um, what is called the uh, platform cover. And then we're going to go to the back. So we've taken this off here, the um, foundation fabric, and now we're seeing our zigzag springs are exposed. This is where the cut is into the frame. And we're going to try to separate these two uh, the best we can. And then do it on the back as well. So I'll show you in the back. Okay, now we're taking off the rest of the dust cover because we've got to take the outside back fabric off to get to the top of the outside back. I'm doing this so you can see this is the way you do it if you want to save the fabric. Now, if I wasn't doing this film, I would just slice this off with a razor blade because I'm going to reupholster it anyhow. I'm not saving this, but I'm doing it for your benefit. That is, taking off all this fabric here, lifting it up, and you'll see what we need to do to save this outside fabric. Okay, we can see where the upholster here cut down at the bottom, and there's going to be a cut right here as well. And then um, you've got to get the cardboard off of here, your inside, your outside back fabric is what this is. So we're going to take all this off. We took the batting off. I don't want to take the whole thing off if I don't have to. We're just trying to shorten it to get it up the stairs. That's the whole point. So that's what we're trying to do now. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to fold this back, and then start exposing where. Um, this, this frame has been cut. There's, yep, there's a cut right here as well. So I'm trying to get to that, and that's what I'll show you when I get finished with taking off the outside back fabric. Okay, we got the outside back fabric off. We had uh, cardboard um, packing up here. We, we got that off. And now we got to take all the inside back fabric off as well. And um, then we need to take the bottom of the dust cover off. I mean, excuse me, the, the platform fabric off. And this one here is a pull strip, like I said earlier. This represents the inside um, fabric, inside back fabric. This fabric and this fabric is all connected to the same. This one underneath here is your platform fabric. All this needs to come off. We need to take the foam off, push it off to the side, loosen up these cuts, take this thing apart. So that's what we're doing next, taking this off here. Okay, so I exposed the foam back here to take the inside um, foam off. We're going to peel that back. I'm going to pull it out of the back, or the bottom rather, I'm trying to get to the cut, cut part, and then we'll take it apart and then get it out of here. That's another plate off. Okay, we peeled back the foam on the inside back. Now I'm going to have to peel back all the um, felt and platform cover here. And i got to take all this off, because this is where we took that top plate off just moments ago. There's another plate down at the bottom, so all these staples need to come out. I'm just basically trying to expose this uh, whole half. We're going to take this half off and carry it up the steps. Other than that, it would have never gotten out of these. Or never, it would never come down the steps in the first place. So this is what needs to be done, so that's what I'm about to do next.
there's another plate here we're going to take off. And you can start to see it's really starting to get uh, weak here. This has already pulled down some. So we're going to take that plate off and then um, keep on going. Okay, so you can see that the uh, webbing there was holding this part on. So now that this is free, I gotta work, I gotta take out these ties here that you see earlier I told you you cut through here, he put this here. I gotta take this off, this uh, webbing tie, and then work on the front and then free this thing out of here. Your staples right here that were um, put on the side, I'm just going to saw all these off. And then I have what are called um, like toenail staples because they come in from the side like this. So I'm going to take those out up at the top and then hopefully pull this thing free down from the bottom. I want to keep this one unit rather than cutting it right in half. There's a whole bunch of staples. There's a lot of glue in here. So if I could take this off as one unit, I think it'll still be fine because I have a brace here. So uh, let's see. Let's see what happens. These staples right here are still holding it in. If I can take those out, that, that's what I call the um, the toenail uh, staples. They go in from the side, and they, they go into this rail. So I'm going to take these out, and it should come apart. So that's what I'm going to do next. Okay, we did it. All this to get it up the stairs. This is what we ended up doing. Taking this completely apart. We can put it back together back at the shop, and uh, that will be what we'll show you next of what to do. This sofa was entirely too long to go up this, these narrow stairs, and then there's a door just to make it 90 degrees, never going to happen. So this is what an upholsterer did to get it in here. I gave you two, set, two sections to look at. One, if you just need to take the arm off to get it around a, uh, an angle or around through a door, that's good. But this one wouldn't have worked if we just took the arm off alone. So we had to take this part, uh, this section apart. And you see how that works if you have zigzag or sagless, sagless springs like this. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And um, I think it's going to look really good when she's finished. Or when we're finished, she's going to like it. And all she really wanted was a slip cover. Hey, Dad, you know there's a sliding glass door back there, right? This was a lot easier, son. Oh, okay. Anyway, okay. I'm glad we did it this way. All right, good. Make sure you lock that sliding glass door. All right, yeah, we will do. <laughs>